Abin Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks, his website RickAckerman.com. Welcome back to the show, Rick. Always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for inviting me on. Rick. The Dow has had a couple of pretty positive days. What's behind that? Uh, psychosis, mass psychosis, extraordinary popular delusions, and the madness of crowds. Uh, the reason we had a 1,600-point rally in the Dow yesterday, all of it short covering, was that uh, virtually every trader on the face of the earth came in thinking, what can I get short? So there was such bearish mentality and that's the only place you could be after reading the weekend news. Um, you know, but, but the ostensible, like, thing that the headline writers took as the reason for the rally was that we had uh, six fewer deaths uh, in Italy over the course of 24 hours. So that was just what the, uh, the, uh, the nut jobs who propagated this rally, just what they needed to, uh, essentially spring a trap on bears. And uh, we, we got a short squeeze rally, and it's still got higher to go because uh, as long as Apple's moving up, so is this entire market. And Apple's 266 now. Uh, it's going to go to 282.45. Please jot that number down because that's where it's going. It had a high of 271 today and, and 70 cents. Why is Apple hot? Is peop- Are people trying to buy dips here like they did when the market was going up? No, it's all short covering. Uh, it, Apple is owned by some of the smartest, uh, craftiest money on earth. And, uh, like Boeing, they're not going to let it simply die. So Boeing, they, they, they dropped the floor out of it and were scarfing up stock at 89 bucks a share. They doubled it. They ran it to 180 in, in the space of less than two weeks. So with Apple, even though I just gave you a pretty bullish target up there at 282, I think Apple will trade under a hundred dollars before it's over, maybe way under a hundred. Uh, they've got some really serious problems. Um, namely, the, their entire assembly is in Asia and China, and um, we've got a recession, which is bound to take a, a big whack out of all of their ridiculously overpriced hardware. So, iPhone sales—it's very easy for the average iPhone owner to say instead of getting the the new thing every two years, which at this point is just a phone with marginally improved uh, uh, a a camera, uh, to say, well, I'll keep it for four or five, six, seven, eight years. So that's going to happen, and uh, it it certainly hasn't been factored into Apple stock. Now, there was just a a little bit of good news about the coronavirus. What if it... uh perks up someplace else and uh, those numbers in Italy don't mean anything. Well, I think if there were news tomorrow that uh, that there were no more deaths and no more spreading of contagion anywhere in the world, um, it, it wouldn't much impact what's already in the pipeline economically. You know, you've had such enormous uh, disruptions in the way pretty much everybody does business that that's going to continue. And and if you take as a category of business, those businesses where at some point in the in, at sales, point of sale or whatever, that people gather, they're going to be problems. Because whether the virus is tamed or not, uh, there are already behavioral changes that are unpredictable. Uh, the market with this huge rally, this short squeeze, is purporting to predict that everything will be all right but it's much more predictable that everything won't be all right and that, uh, you know, as the Wall Street Journal asked yesterday in a headline, when will you feel safe in a crowd of 20,000 people? 
So we've got uh, to consider the economic impact of all things entertainment and travel, and that's a big segment of an economy that's all about consumer spending. Uh, you know, when you take travel and entertainment out, that's such a big piece that it's hard to see this market uh, with this uh, ridiculous 20% correction uh, off the all-time highs uh, as of the peak of today's short squeeze. So so whatever they're taking is good news, maybe good news in the – Few of us will be dying for a little while, but even there, we could get whacked again because there's a pretty good case that uh, we're not, with everybody sequestered, when they come out of sequestration, they're only going to be vulnerable when the virus comes around for a second pass. So uh, so I hate to sound pessimistic, but that's kind of the way it is. Hmm. Well, uh, just looking at uh, the stories National Geographic did uh, about the Spanish flu pandemic a uh, hundred years ago, almost to the day that, uh, yes, cities were locked down. And then when people came out, some cities had a spike that was just as high as the original one. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we may see that really, but the stock market doesn't much seem to care, which got this occasion to short squeeze because there were those six fewer deaths in Italy last, uh, over the last 24 hours. So, uh, but, but we are so far from being out of the woods that it's, uh, it's almost, it's, it's tragic and laughable that we're getting this reaction here. Uh, it's kind of a, a suck in rally. We'll have more with Rick Ackerman right after this. Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlin, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rick Ackerman. Rick, what's gold doing? It's doing nicely. Um, the June COMEX contract currently at 1693. It's come down actually kind of hard from uh, an overnight high at 1742. But I'm using, I believe it's an 1851 target for June COMEX. And I think it's finally starting to reflect uh, the reality of, uh, of all this uh, stimulus we're getting. Uh, based on money that comes from uh, helicopters, from thin air, from the trees, however, what, whichever metaphor you want to use. So gold is finally starting to react, uh, uh, even if the the stock, the mining company segment is a little bit more of still, they're going to come around too because, uh, uh, for one, the, the margins of these mining companies are exploding. All of their energy costs are decreasing hugely. And uh, it's going to be a lot less expensive for them to get gold out of the ground. But then on the other side of it, you have uh, gold uh, as a just as a store of, of, uh, of wealth and all the other things that we've uh, had as reasons to uh, hold gold over uh, centuries and, and millennia. So uh, gold looks pretty good here. And... Um, uh, I think it's still got to get across the valley of deflation. I think we're going to go into a, a deflation that essentially wipes, liquidates all the debts, uh, including uh, mortgage debt. Uh, we've talked about this before. I think all mortgages will come to be written as uh, lease agreements. But uh, I think we're going to have a deflation. But after all these years, I'm finally convinced that uh, the it will be followed by a hyperinflation. If we hit hyperinflation, is gold a protection, or will it just be a factor in it? Gold will do just fine. I think in inflation, uh, deflation or inflation, I think gold uh, will work out as a, a store of value. 
uh, in any kind of weather, I think that gold will uh, hold its purchasing power in comparison to virtually any other asset. And, uh, you know, I've always been skeptical of these forecasts of gold 5,000 or 10,000, but uh, I'd have to say at this point there may be a chance of that when the government gets to the point of, uh, of essentially monetizing all the stimulus that's being done now. And if we get that stimulus up into the 20 million, 20 trillion dollar range, uh, we're really on that slippery slope. Uh, the, the, the government will have to cap interest rates, uh, in order to avoid the fatal burden of debt that would happen if interest rates were allowed to rise. So that's going to separate treasuries from true market prices. And it means that the Fed will be the only buyer of treasuries. And at that point, yes, I think we'll be on the, the ramp to hyperinflation. But again, I think it's going to follow a deflationary uh, depression. We'll have more with Rick Ackerman right after this. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Rick Ackerman. Rick, do you think they will drive interest rates into negative territory in North America? Uh, no, that's impossible, and it's ineffectual as Europe is has proven. Uh, you know, what's the point of it? Do you, do you, if your interest rates are negative, do you really think you're going to stimulate consumption? Um, the, the, the money velocity has collapsed here, and that's one reason why stimulus itself doesn't have a prayer of working. Uh, even the two trillion dollars, whatever the, the sum is that's being mailed out in the form of checks to so many Americans, uh, they're not going to go out and buy Cadillacs with that. Um, and I think the longer that's, that it sits in their accounts, uh, number one, because there's really nothing we can spend it on these days, and uh, number two, because a lot of people will be putting it away for a rainy day. In that sense, I think that the entire two trillion could be uh, could disappear down a deflationary sinkhole, and uh, that's why the dollar index is still trading up near a hundred. It's not like the dollar has gotten. Uh, slam dunk because of all the stimulus talk, and th that that's not going to end. It's like every day you wake up and there's a, a, a further possible new trillion dollars for this or two trillion dollars for that. But relative to the, uh, I calculate an asset base of 88 trillion dollars, the total value of uh, the stocks Americans hold and uh, the real estate, and um, so e at the March 23rd low. We had a reduction in that asset value of about fifteen trillion dollars. So, so stocks alone are more than a, an offset to whatever stimulus they're doing, and that's why I think we're on a deflationary course before we get to hyperinflation. Should companies that uh, look like they're going to be failing be bailed out this time around? No, I don't think we can afford to do much bailing. I mean, in the first place, you ask, bailing with what? And uh, in the, it, it's one thing to bail out American consumers by sending them all checks. But when you bail out, let's say, Boeing, um, it's, not, it's not quite as simple. It's not a consumption uh, calculation. You, you bail out a company with real assets, and the bailout ostensibly will – be a loan against assets and, and productivity. So you can't possibly put that burden, paying back those loans on a company if you expect it to really recover. So uh, so there's a real problem with bailouts. Uh, one, they don't work. And two, if they are truly done as loans, they saddle the companies themselves with uh, 
uh, with overwhelming debt. Should uh, consumers be worried that there could be bail-ins for the banks? Both Canada and the U.S. have legislation allowing the banks to dip into your bank account to balance their books. No, I don't think we'll get to that. I, I think a lot sooner you'll find people taking their money out of the banks. Uh, you know, the FDIC works just fine if we're in prosperous times and maybe one big bank or a big bank and a half uh, is having trouble. But in hard times, uh, in a deflationary environment, um, that there is effectively the FDIC is not worth anything, and neither is SIPIC, which is the equivalent uh, uh, ins- quote unquote insurance for money that's in stock market accounts. So I, I wouldn't worry about a bail-in. I think if there's anything uh, in the way of a precipitous accident in a banking system, uh, it, it'll come well. It'll be it'll come too quickly to have this uh, uh, this. There'll be too much of it, really, for a bailing. Are energy stocks uh, something to look at now with uh, prices so low? Yeah, there's something to look at as the the proximal, the the ground zero of where this deflation is going to come from. I mentioned the 88 trillion dollars uh, that is that could deflate far more than whatever the government can put into circulation by way of stimulus, but hugely larger than that is the energy patch, and we, uh, we've talked about this before, when we came out of the uh, mortgage-backed securities collapse of 2007 and eight, the smart guys looked around and thought, well, what, what can we hock up to our eyeballs? And the answer, the big bet was on the energy patch on natural gas and, and crude oil. So uh, uh, between that and housing and real estate, we spawned a derivatives market. That's basically a lot of hot air. Uh, of a quadrillion and a half dollars. So that's not something the government could or would even attempt to bail out. You can't do it. So that sits as the big sort of uh, the, the deflationary juggernaut. And, uh, you know, Trump talks about we've got to get the Russians and the Saudis together on curtailing supplies so that Texas can pull back on its own output. Uh, but he's not really... He's not really mentioning the, the real problem, and that's the amount, the, the huge, 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 huge amount of leveraging that's been done uh, on the basis of energy, uh, with energy assets as collateral. That's really the big problem. It's not whether the oil companies are making enough to keep drilling and, and to do their uh, research and development. Uh, that's, that's just a, a kind of side sideshow. The, the real problem, again, is the amount of borrowing, the, the, the amount of uh, borrowing that's, be, that's been done on energy-based collateral. Now, of course, uh, OPEC plus Russia, what if they cut production? Would that affect prices much right now, considering most storage facilities are nearly at capacity? Yeah, they can cut production. They can go to zero, and there's still going to be a glut. As you say, the storage facilities are filling up. Places like Colorado, they're offering, uh, you know, natural gas buyers that they'll pay you to take shipments. And um, uh, to, we have an unprecedented, unprecedented situation where there's so little energy-based travel, airplanes, cars, and things, that uh, th- there's no fuel being used, really. Um, other than to run air conditioners, you know, the power companies are putting out power to run air conditioners and heaters. So, uh, so to, to think, I don't even think the Russians and Saudis think this, and maybe that's why they haven't done anything, but to believe that they could actually curtail supply sufficiently to chase this demand that's actually free falling right now, to chase that demand lower so that it could stimulate prices, you gotta have your head examined. Also, uh, it seems the strategy that Russia and Saudi Arabia were trying to come up with was kill the U.S. shale oil industry and destroy Canada's oil sands. But did they forget the U.S. has deep pockets and wouldn't allow an industry like that to be destroyed? Well, that was before the virus. Yeah. Um, but now to try to think about destroying any, any capacity, it's absurd. Again, you can't. You can't reduce supply enough to chase falling demand lower as quickly as it's falling. 
Rick, uh, how would we sum up what's going on right now? What a mess. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, any rally in the stock market is simply short. Uh, it's short covering panic, uh, but never underestimated because the whole purpose of a short squeeze is to, it, 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 by, by its very nature, it will go far enough to convince people, hey, maybe my financial advisor is right. Maybe I should just sit this one out. But they're all idiots. And, um, you know, the, the, when they get you fixated on this idea that we're going to have a deep V bottom and everything's going to come roaring back, you need to think about the reality, reality of it and think about how uh, the economy is in a permanent state of, well, it's changed permanently. The things, so many things that were uh, working and obviously generating revenues for the purveyors, uh, it's not going to be the same. So to talk of a, a deep V bottom like America's economy is going to come roaring back, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Rick, thank you so much for chatting with us. Always a pleasure, Jim. And I, I hope I didn't depress you. Uh, well, I can depress myself. I don't need any help. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Always a pleasure. Thanks. My guest has been Rick Ackerman, editor of the newsletter Rick's Picks. His website, rickackerman.com. If you have any questions for Rick or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Find us on Twitter at House Street. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.